Okay. I've got it. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain my ideas about education uh, on a video. Um, and this is probably going to be the longer version. Perhaps I'm going to produce a smaller one in front of a bunch of kids. And of course, I can't actually record the kids because that's meant to be illegal for some odd reason. So what I'll do is I'll just set up the camera. I could have done this this week, this last week at the school, and said to the kids, I'd like to explain an idea to the director of education. Okay? But I can't seem to speak to the director of education, so I'm going to speak to you guys, the kids. You see, And that means I'm going to have the interaction of the kids a little. I mean, it's going to be slightly above their heads, but it is to do with them in their class, so it should work. So, um, this is kind of like a, uh, a simulation of the kind of conversation we have. So, give us feedback on this. Do you think that this could actually work? And the idea is that we'd have to have internet connection. Okay, so I've got my computer here. Oh, I have switched it on. Okay, we're going to have to wait for that. Um, <clears throat> and the idea is that I can actually direct them. That's the Mac. Uh, direct them to a website so while you're watching this on YouTube what you can do is open up like tab browse or open up another window and then you can actually go to this website uh, in fact it's uh, davidpinto.org and then you find a specific page which describes my ideas on education so I can actually look at that now and then you can too when that's loaded and that means that we're looking at the same thing on the internet even though I'm recording this now you know on Sunday afternoon or something or other and you're at work or something or other at home, wherever it is that you are on another day, and yet we're looking at the same thing at the same time. Is that wacky? That's wacky. Okay. So, um, my ideas about education, my ideas about education are completely alternative. Not in a big way. It's not as if I'm saying it's all, com it's all completely different, but each thing is about that different than normal. Okay? So it's not as if I'm suggesting something radical. Oh God, it's not like communism versus capitalism. Capitalism. It's not like that. It's like just doing what we're doing, but just slightly differently. And it means that instead of having discipline and discipline problems, what we're trying to do is create a system that encourages self-discipline. That's a completely different thing. So what we're used to in our schools, uh, I'm just going to log on. What we're used to in our school is if you do something wrong. Um, what happens is, is that a, you know the teacher's going to, you know, there are, there are kind of consequences. The teacher's going to share, somebody's going to be annoyed, or there are consequence exercises, punishment exercises, and so on and so forth. That's why we don't do it because, yeah. And so you know they ask us to do all this work. I mean work. I mean it's like you know it's like going down the mine. It's all, and if you don't do it, somebody's going to hit you. Well, it's not quite like that. What we have in schools is you, you get all this maths, maths exercise. Yeah, you have to do it. And if you don't, somebody's going to get on your back. Okay. And a lot of people interact like that, and a lot of us, uh, and this, the system's kind of run like that, and it's kind of like, it's like the prison. And uh, somebody in the 70s, I can't remember the person's name, big, big uh, person in terms of education ideas, and I think he was like a priest or something, and he wrote this basic, tiny little book, and it was basically saying that we're forced to be in schools. If we're forced to be in schools, the only other institutions like that where you're forced to be is prison. And so effectively, kids are forced to be in prison. They're in prison. And so teachers have the role, the double role of actually trying to educate, inspire, you know, show them something interesting, and at the same time, make sure that they're there. <laughs> they're like wardens. And, they, and the system has kind of emphasized the wardens with a bit of education. I'd like to say that we're educators, but also we also have that kind of role. Not such a nice one. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start this thing off. Um, probably already got to start with another five minutes. Five minutes. Can I actually see this? How long we've actually taken this thing? Four minutes. Okay, so we're in four minutes. Four minutes. Uh -huh. Easy. So um, here I am on the internet. Can I take this out? What I'd like you to do is go to a place called davidpinto.org. Okay, uh, my connection here. Thanks, Mary Claire, is uh, really fast. Click on me, I'm the only person there, but it's open to other David Pintos. And then you click on, you get this kind of face, it's a emoticon, and I've kind of extended the emoticon. And if you click on the copyright symbol, which is meant to represent the light bulb, click on that. And then there's loads of things on the right hand side. Uh, go to educational reform, it sounds a bit grand. Okay, and there you go, educational reform. 
current situation. Actually, I've got to update that because yeah. I've actually had I've got 2004 experience, 2005 experience, and actually got 2006 experience. Um, if you click on the actual uh, picture, it clicks on the actual concepts. Uh, it's got a bit of an introduction, and it says effectively the it's child-centered education. But the difference between this, okay and what I believe the current pedagogy is, or at least the recent pedagogy was, um, the theory about education, about child-centred learning, is that, and I've done this with kids, I've done this in classrooms, I ask teachers, I say, if, you're, if you are the centre of education, if the child is the centre of education, who is, and they're obviously the most important person, kind of in the classroom as it were, who's the second most important person? And most teachers will say, the teacher. What I'm saying, if the child is the centre of education, well, you've got 30 of them in the room. So relative to one of them, a single child, the next most important person in that child's life, educationally, any, anyway, is the people that's around them, the people that are the other children that are in the classroom. Later, it becomes the teacher. At another point, it becomes the teacher. But the most important part, as you know, and as everybody knows, and all the kids know, what they want is they want to interact with each other. That's what they want to do. They want to have a bit of a laugh. They want to play. Because when they grow older, you know, it's their peer group. They don't really want to interact with adults that much. I mean, they kind of do. They want their attention and so on. But really, what's really happening is all the social stuff. And so that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's, 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 the, my, my, that's my basis for education, is, is for, you know, the world situation, the world peace, and so on and so forth. It's not people in higher positions, hierarchy. It's our peers, our friends, for example. So, what is the basis of it? Well, each of, I've got this kind of, con you see, I can't represent this linearly. This just doesn't fit into, um, you know, I'm going to write a report, and this is what it is. It doesn't work like that. If, if the genuine centre of uh, the theory and practice of my educational kind of practice and theory is one individual and then a bunch of individuals. Therefore, you're talking about psychosocial dynamics. And what, I'm, uh, what I do in my classes is I keep on reflecting back to the kids, and I've got various techniques, some of which I've described in this educational reform kind of concept plan thing. It reflects back on the kids. So, for example, I have... Uh, no, I'll, go to that. I'll go to that in a second. What can I do? It's completely different. Um, what was it saying? Uh, kids, what are they doing? Right, so if you've got a kid, and you've got another kid, you're talking about groups. You're talking about groups. You have to start working, managing groups. And the relationship 1 to 30, you have to reduce to 1 to a few groups. Each child is effectively got another like 20, 30, 25, 30 kids in the room. That's 1 to 25, 30. That's, that's too big. So you want to have 1 to about 7. 1 to 7 groups, you know, 1 to 7 so that you have to form little groups. And the teacher's in charge, in effect, of creating these groups, okay? And what you're doing is you're managing these groups. That's what you're doing as a teacher. Uh, you're effectively putting the teacher further away from the kid, in a way, uh, in terms of management. The teacher doesn't get involved with the management of an individual. Therefore, when the child rebels, or the child doesn't like what's going on, and so on and so forth, the child will react against their siblings, uh, not siblings, but their partners, their friends. If that doesn't work out, the group kind of collapses or doesn't really work very well. It's the other groups that have to deal with the collapse of that group. Only finally, if the child is causing a disruption in the group, and the group's causing a disruption in the whole class, and the class can't actually organize it, then it's the teacher's responsibility to say, well, this is what we have to do. Do you see? It's like a failure. If the kids are self-disciplined, and they've accepted that they wish to be self-disciplined, and generally they do, and they don't want to be disciplined, it means that if the teacher disciplines them, it's a failure of the class. If we have this in schools, I believe the effect on society will be profound. Okay.